So you know, I gave that uh, gave the, the disclaimers and everything, and um, I think pretty much everybody. I'll request that you stay muted unless you have questions to ask. So it just you know helps keep background noises down. Okay, so this is my class. Very simple, basic guide on submitting heraldry for the absolute beginner. Uh, let's see. General information. You can't submit a device without a name. You can have a name already submitted, or you can submit a name at the same time. But the way that the filing goes in the College of Heralds is everything goes under your main SCA name, not your legal name, not your mundane name. So that's why you have to have a name for a device. Um, and no matter how documentable and period your legal name is, you can't use it. Ask me how I know. <laughs> because uh, a friend of mine tried submitting his name and it is a perfectly documentable name, perfectly period name, but then they looked at the, the they compared the submitting name versus the legal name and said, um, you can't do that. So we changed one letter in his name, resubmitted it, everything was kosher. Uh, let's see. If you don't know what name you want, would, but you have a device that you really, really, really want to submit, that's fine. You can register it with uh, what's called the legal name allowance and the branch name allowance, which means you can use your regular name plus the branch you live in. Um, and you can always change it up later once you find a name that you like, just for another $9. Um, the timeline for submitting takes six to nine months. If you submit at Penzik or just after Penzik, it takes longer, like three months. It takes like nine to 12 months. The advantage of submitting at Penzik is there are a lot of heralds from all over the known world who have been doing this forever. So, well, some of them are doing it forever. We take any level of Herald at Herald's Point. But, so you'll have all that knowledge to draw from. The disadvantage is there are so many people who say, oh, I'll just wait till Penzik to submit it, that there are so many submissions that we have to break it up over three months and then, and then it delays everything else until we can catch up round about January, February. So there's the advantages and disadvantages. That's why I try to, anyone I help, if they're doing it in the spring or the early summer, I tell them, get it sent in before Pensick. So there you go on that. Uh, the current fee is $9 per submission. That is not $9 per envelope of how many things you send in. That is one name is a submission, one badge is a submission, one device is a submission, an alternate name is, is a submission. So no matter how many submissions you put in, that's how many extra $9 you have to put in. So if you register a name and a device, you put in $18. Um, you're allowed one main name and five alternate names, one main device and five badges. Um, you can use like the names at slots for like households, awards, orders. You can use badges for you know yourself, obviously, but you can also use it for um, household badges, etc. cetera. Uh, so we'll start off with all the rules. CENA, Standards for Evaluations of Name and Armory. I'm going to plunk a link into the chat area. So that has everything. Um, that's it? Okay. Yeah. So when I started off being a Herald, um, I've been a Herald for about six, seven years, something like that. When I started off as a Herald, I jumped in feet first into the deep end. I didn't know what I was doing. I was told, here, read Cena. It seriously took me three days, even skipping over stuff that I didn't really understand. <laughs> so it's a slog to read, but it has all the rules. Um, so that's that. So let's start with names. The purpose of names. Oh, actually, before I start in on that, 
Does anybody have any questions so far? All good? All good. Okay. So names. The purpose of names, if it's not obvious, is how to tell people apart. Like some people were talking, it's like, oh, I was talking to that girl. Which girl? Violet. Wait a minute. There's there's three violets. Which violet? Violet Hughes. Okay. Now we know who you're talking about. So that's that. Um, in Cena, there are some easy appendixes. Um, the first one that I use a lot is Appendix A. There's another link in chat for you. Appendix A tells you what patterns have been established within a culture. Like for, hang on. For English, it tells you, it breaks down the English into different sections, like Old English, Middle English, Welsh, Scots. It tells you, are there double given names? Does it use a locative? Do we use patronymics? Is there a description or an occupational, a double by name, something else? So that chart, that, that appendix is exceptionally handy for something like that. Um, so that's one way to go about looking through it. There is the other appendix that I use just as much is Appendix C. There's another link for you. And Appendix C tells you which groups can be mixed in names. Like, for example, I mean, this is based off a uh, documented trading areas, areas that had contact with each other. Like an English person was never really gonna deal with a Russian person. So you can't have an English first name and a Russian last name. But if you're going within one culture, you can have a spread of 500 years. And that is not difficult to do at all. If you start off with you know, a name, a first name in let's say 1200, but you find a last name that you like from 1400, that's only 200 years apart. Easy, not difficult. I mean, it's not, I have heard of people going to like 600 years difference. So it does happen occasionally, but it's not hard to bring everything within 500 years. If you mix two cultures from the Appendix C, that brings it down to 300 years. Still not very difficult to find something within 300 years, but it's a little bit more constrained um, because trade routes vary depending on what's in vogue, what, what, you know, what the, the winds were, I don't know. But uh, you still have to stay within 300 years if you're mixing cultures. Still not difficult to accomplish. Um, let's see. All right, period-ish names. So there's a lot of names that people in the beginning of the SEA in the 70s and 80s thought were beautiful Renaissance names. And it turns out that they were from Victorian era, which is decidedly out of our period. Um, like Fiona, Rhiannon, things like that. That uh, Victorian... Um, writers made up these stories and they made up these beautiful names that they thought sounded very medieval and very Renaissance, but they're not documentable. So round about, I think it was in the nineties in the mid nineties, the rule, the heraldry rules got tightened up and said, no, we're not allowing these names anymore. You have to find something that's actually documentable. The way to get around that is find something that sounds close. Like I have a friend who for many years went by the name Fiona, which is a Victorian name. She wanted to register something. She found a Gaelic name, Finola. It's definitely not spelled like Fiona because Gaelic takes every single consonant that they can and just shoves it in there. <laughs> I really don't like Gaelic. 
Um, but anyway, so it's pronounced Fiona. Uh, sh it, it's in Gaelic, pronounced Fi Finola, but she pronounces it Fiona. Um, another thing to do is to shorten a name. I have another friend who went by the name Tor, um, a nice Viking persona. Tor is not a documentable name. Torfi is. So he registered the name Torfi, and we just shrink it down to Tor. So there's ways to get around it, to get what you want, if you're not concerned about being more period and having a period accurate name. There is a little box on, on the submission form you can check off that says, yes, I want my name to be more uh, historically accurate. I, I advise people don't check that off um, because if there is a way to make your name more accurate, most of the time the commenters as your name is going through the process will say, well, if we tweaked it just a little bit, it could be more accurate. And someone will come back to the submitter and say, do you want something more accurate or do you want what you want? And they'll let you have it either way. So that's good. So that's basically names in a nutshell. Any questions so far? While I have some tea. No, everything good? All right. Sorry, I did have a question. Oh, yes, what's up? You, you used the terms locative and by name, and I don't know what those are. Okay, a locative is your location. Like, um, like my alternate name is, is Purple of Onda Begin. I mean, that uses branch name allowance, but it's kind of like that. Like um, Marion of York, that's a locative by name. A by name is a last name. Does that answer? Yeah, so like Leonardo da Vinci would have been Leonardo of the town of Vinci. Yes. How about by name? By name is your last name. Oh, okay. That was I think. <laughs> yeah, by name is the last name. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay, anything else? Nope. Okay, let's move on to devices. So the purpose of a device is to tell who you are. Um, the main purpose of them originally was to tell someone apart. Say, um, say you're at Penzik. You know how big the Penzik field is, right? It's like a football field size. I mean, usually it's one one army against one one army, but imagine that it's a three sided a three sided battle. So you're looking at two different armies all the way on the other side. One of them has shields that are blue with a white circle on it. You can tell those are your allies. You do not want to go after them. The other bat, the other army is red with a yellow lion on it. That's your enemy. Those are the guys who go after. That's the original purpose of a device. So pretty straightforward. Um, the differences between devices and badges. A device basically says, this is me. So if you're like at Penzig and some camps have like uh, a, a wall outside their, their encampment and they have little shields on it and everything, those are the people that are in camp. So you can easily look at it and go like, uh, da, 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 da. oh yeah, that my, that's my friend that they're in camp, I can go say hi. A device, uh, uh, sorry, a badge says, this is mine. So um, if you're walking along like a, a couple of, of easy ups and you see a chair there with a badge on it, it's like, oh, I know that's my friend's badge. That's their chair. I can, I, I can hang out there. They'll, 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 they're okay with me sitting in their chair. So you put it on like your chair, your wagon, um, your armor bag, your squires, your protégés, because they are yours. 
And so that, that's the difference between badges and devices. Um, let's see. Okay. The colors and metals. Um, all right. There's another link for you. You got to scroll down a little bit, but it's, it's in there. There's another link. Okay. The colors are, oh, that one's wrong. Sorry, that's a bad link. It doesn't separate the, out the uh, colors and metals, I don't think. Anyway, all right, the colors are blue, red, purple, black, green. There is no orange, there is no brown. The metals are white and yellow for gold and sil or silver and gold. This makes a difference because when you're coming up with a device, you cannot have a metal on a metal. You cannot have a color on a color. What I mean by that is, imagine you have a birthday cake, a multi-tiered birthday cake, getting fancy. On the first layer, you can have two colors or you can have one color, but on the second layer up, you can't have another color. It has to be a metal or vice versa. The reason for this is contrast. You want to have high contrast. Like I was saying before, the shield that you want to see on the other side of the, the Penzig battlefield. If you have a blue field with a white circle on it, you can see that really easily. If you have a blue field or a blue background with a green dot on it, you can't tell that quite as easily. So you want to have high contrast. And the, the um, so that the, there, there's exceptions to everything, but since this is an absolute basic class, I'm giving you the basic rules. Oh, my cat. Um, so you keep, uh, you keep high contrast and it's good. Um, there are also what's called furs, like ermine and ver. Uh, ermine is usually seen as black and white, and ver is usually seen as blue and white. Uh, the ermine was made from ermine fur. It's a little weasel. Um, and they have little, they're mostly white with little black tips on the, their tails, so that's where that came from. The ver is squirrel. A squirrel pelts. So it was like dark on the outside and then a white belly. So that, and it, it like got patterned together and that's where bear comes from. I see ermine a bunch. You can use different colors. You can call out the colors that you want to use on it. It's a lot of fun. I don't see bear very much. I think I've seen it maybe three times being used. So people don't like it as much apparently, but it's there for use if you feel like you want it. Um, it's also in that link that I gave. And let's see, what else? What's next? Field divisions. Okay. Um, like I was saying for that birthday cake, on one layer, like the background, if you want to have two colors together, you can. A way to make it interesting and fun is instead of having it just mushed together and a straight line now in between, you can have a complex line. And let me get a link for that. There. So it's like wavy or it's like jagged or you can have like rays of the sun. You can have fleur de -lis even. Um, you can have it's there's a lot of choices and it's a lot of fun um one thing that is good for is clearing a conflict like when you submit a device it gets checked against everybody else who has ever in society submitted a device or a badge badges and devices get 
checked together. They don't get checked separate. Um, if you have one that is too close to someone else's, a good way to change that is if you have a plain line in between two colors, just change it to a jagged line, change it to some other complex line, and that helps to clear conflict. Um, all right. Devices are a lot more complicated than names. So um, is there any questions so far? No? OK. Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, how is the checking done against everybody else's? Is it like a giant book or a database? Or what kind of form is it in? There's a database. And it is, oh my god, incredibly complicated to use. Um, I've taken a, a class at Penzik three times on how to do a uh, conflict checking, and I'm still extremely unsure of myself in it. Um, so, are you yes, a, a beginner, uh, Harold? Oh, I'm sorry, May. Yes, go ahead. Um, there has been uh, there's a site called the ONA that pretty much lists off everybody. If you're good with search engines, have fun with it. If you're not good with search engines, it takes a little while to actually learn the input controls that it's looking for. But that thing holds everybody's. Uh, it's kind of like the big book of death. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you want, if you have a, a device that you want conflict checked. Um, if you think you can do it yourself, go ahead. Uh, I, myself, I conflict check, and then I ask a friend to conflict check, and then I ask another friend to conflict check, and then I put it up on Facebook, and I say, can someone please conflict check this? Also because there is no one way to do it. So different people have different methods. Um, And I'll talk about conflict checking names in a minute. I completely forget about doing that. All right. So things that are not allowed for devices. You can't. All right. There's a term called marshalling. It looks like two devices that were smooshed together. And the reason you can't do this is because it is a period practice for a husband and a wife to take each their own devices, mush them together, and display it as one. So if you have a device that's marshaled, it looks like you're being two people. Um, a way to clear that is put a complex line in there. Nice and simple and fun. Another thing that is not allowed is uh, obvious modernity. I have no idea if that's a real word, but I'm going with it. Um, so you can't use a hand grenade. You can't use a, a tank. You, you can't use a, a modern clock. Um, and as much as I would love it, you can't use TARDIS. <laughs> Hi, I'm a big Doctor Who geek. OK, um, so. I mean, there, there's sometimes thing, ways you can get around it. There are a lot of um, period devices or, or period charges. That's what we call the objects. There are per period charges that can look like things that you want in modern times. Um, my device is uh, it's called a punner. It's a, a tool that was used to tamp down dirt around fence posts. It's um, a straight line with uh, two circles around it. And I didn't even realize it at the time. One of my friends says, hey, that looks like a sonic screwdriver. Yes. <laughs> um, so th there's ways you can play around and get something that that is a, a, like a modern pun or looks kind of like something in modern times, but isn't actually. So there's ways to play around with that. Um, all right, a thing that isn't not allowed, but something that I recommend against is called a resume device. 
um, say you start off in the FCA and you're a fighter, so you want to put a sword on there and you want to put like, droplets that look like bloods on there, which is called a gout. Um, so you have a sword and you have blood on there and you're a fighter, great, rah, rah, rah. You get it all passed and everything. Two years later, you hurt your back and um, you're not a fighter anymore. So now you're a baker. So you put all sorts of bread on there and cheese on there and other fun things and eventually you, you're you got something that you can't do baking anymore so now you want to change your device again i mean i recommend against resume devices it's allowed if you really want it go ahead it's your money you can always change it again later but i recommend against it that's just my two cents um I think that's the basics for devices. Any questions? All good. All right. Uh, let me go back to conflict checking names. Um, I just took a, 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 a class on Discord the other day to try to figure out how to do it. But one of the things is it has to be one big syllable away or two small syllables balls away from another person's name. Like if you have John Smith and you have John Smythe, <laughs> that's too close. Um, you can add in the, you can add in a locative. You can add in uh, a second name if the culture allows it. There's ways around it. So it can be John Smith and um, John Mark Smith. Something like that. Or it can be John Smith and Johannes Smith. Those are different enough. Um, conflict checking devices is there's SC and DC, SC, uh, sorry, SD, S, no, SC, I was right, stands for significant change. That is something significant. So you need one significant change away from everybody else's device. Or you need two DCs or distinct changes. Like, yeah, that's distinctly different. So it's smaller changes. Um, you can be things like changing the color of something. It can be um, changing the direction it's facing. It can be adding in another one. It can be, you know, lots of other little changes. Um, a good way to do it, as I said before, was uh, put in a complex line division. <laughs> you can add it, add a border around that gives another change. You can add a chief on top that gives another change. Um, you can put you can put little things around. You can take things away. You can change the position. There's many ways. Um, and, it, and a herald that is working with you will suggest a change. Well, I think it would look good if you change this. That way it clears conflict. So heralds should work with you to get things the way you want. Um, what is considered a significant change? A significant change is changing a charge completely like if you have a red background with a yellow lion on it change the lion to um i don't know change it to a mouse <laughs> change it to a square we can allow just geometric charges just that's a significant change um so i believe that basically covers it. Thanks. No problem. Um, is there anything else? I forgot to go and just go over my notes. Okay. I think that's it. Okay. Uh, my usual spiel. Okay, bear in mind that these arms are for use rather than registering and forgetting. You will want to paint, engrave, embroider, and otherwise display them. 
you may wish to consider that when devising ROMs. Be sure it's a design you really like, not just eh, it was good enough, whatever. And be sure you can be able to replicate it in your chosen medium. On the other hand, it is not a tattoo. If you decide later on you don't like it, for another processing fee, you can submit a new design. For example, me. I registered a device. It was a uh, Papura within a Maskell, a cat's paw print argent, which means it was a purple background with a, a diamond outline and a cat paw print in the middle of it. I liked it. It was nice. It was fun. I, as soon as I got the notification that it was officially registered, I said, I don't want this anymore. <laughs> and I changed it for another $9. So get pick something you really like. But you can always change it later. Um, and also, the, the straight line with two circles is a lot easier to draw out than a cat's paw print. Um, let's see, what else? Got that, got that. Um, okay. The rules for devices can get fiddly and complicated. That's what I'm here for. I can, and every other Herald, we can help you through the process. And the rules are the same across society. So it doesn't matter if you go to your local Herald or if you go to a Herald that's based out of England or based out of California. Every Herald has to follow the same rules. Um, if you start off with me, oh, that's a question. So for Vikings where heraldry was not really a thing, ooh, where did that go? It was not really a thing, what goes on then? Well, it's all the same core rules. Um, you can have Viking inspired devices, like you can use runes. You can use a Thor's hammer. You can use things that, uh, you can use ravens. You can use things that evoke Vikings. Uh, same for like Japanese heraldry or devices. You can use um, like, uh, lotus blossoms. You can use kanjis. You can use things that say, that definitely screen out, this is a Viking device or this is a Japanese device, but it still has to follow the same core rules. Okay, um, so with Heralds, thank you, no problem. Uh, you can go to any other, any Heralds, they all follow the same rules, they'll all help you. If it's a personality conflict, that's fine, you can go to another Herald. The only thing I ask is if you have a problem with a Herald and you decide to go to someone else, let somebody know so that that word can get back to them, especially if it's me. Go to my coronet, go to Blue Tiger, go to my peer, who's Ryan McQuite, um, go to my husband, my sister, anyone in my household, go to someone and tell them, hey, Violet's being stupid, I don't like her, so that they can take a rolled up newspaper, smack me on the nose and go, bad Harold! And I'll learn. Trust me, I learn. Um, I may be slow, but I learned. <laughs> so if you have a problem with a Harold, let somebody know so that, you know, things can get taken care of. We don't want missing steps in, in, in here. Um, and really, as much as Harold's used to have a a reputation of, oh, heralds are there just to block you, not give you what you want. We really are here to help you. So that is basically all my spiel. Um, yeah, if you want to email me, I do have a handout with all this information on it. If you want to email me, let's see, go and chat 149760 at members.com. EastKingdom.org. Okay, that's my email address. You can email me for any questions. You can email me if you want a copy of the handout for this class. Um, how, where do we find heralds outside of events to work with us? Uh, you can. Um, May I on this one, Violet? 
Uh, yeah, I was just going to say there's Ask a Herald, but I think it's broken, but go ahead. Yeah, it's been broken for a little bit. Uh, the, the, the latest that a lot of us have actually done is if you could find SCA Heraldry Chat on, on, on Facebook, most of us are on there. And that's where I usually go to have uh, a lot of the devices I work on screened as well. Yep. Thank you. There's that. You can email uh, blue.tiger at eastkingdom.org. It's tiger with a Y, obviously, because we're tigers. Um, so you can email her and she'll filter down requests for some of us, so, for somebody to get in touch and help you. Um, you can usually your barony, shire, canton, whatever you have, uh, will have their own heralds. So you can go to them. Um, oh, there's the, the link for the chat for the uh, Facebook group. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. So you can email if you need help. You can email if you want a handout of this class. Is there any other questions? No. All right. Well, thank you very much for attending. I hope I have been helpful. And uh, sorry, I did have one more question. Oh, yes. I apologize. Yes. What's that? Um, I submitted a request for help through the um, East Kingdom website. And okay. I never got like a confirmation email that said I would. And I haven't heard anything. And it's been quite a few months. So is okay. there any way to check to see if it went through? Or should I just redo it somewhere else? Was that on the um, Ask a Herald? I think it may have been. Yeah, that's been broken. Um, my my suggestion to you is uh, you have my email address there. You can email me and I'll pass it along to whoever can help you best. Okay. Um, but yeah, I apologize for that. And it's been a known issue that every once in a while we're, uh, we've been poking at and trying to fix. But <laughs> technology is great until it isn't, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Okay, anything else? I also wanted to just actually say that if you email either Kingdom or your local Violet or anybody like that, and you're not getting a response in a timely manner, email me, Blue Dot Talbot or Golden Rapier uh, or Triana. I can't remember what her southern title is currently at the moment, uh, but we're here to help facilitate that as well. Yep, we want to help you. <laughs> That's all? Okay. All right, great. If you have anything else, feel free to get in contact with me. You can uh, email me there. I'm on Facebook, Purple Allison at Eckers Hoffman. Um, and I hope to see you guys at events eventually. So uh, go forth and do the heraldry. And I will figure out how to click off the how do I stop the recording and stop recording bye <laughs>